Hi, and welcome to the next chapter of Introduction to Programming. We're still very early in, uh, in the course, um, and we've seen already what variables are. Today, we're going to see what statements are. And this is more or less an overview of what we'll see. Um, and we'll start with, as you can see, the expressions. Now, statements are whatever is uh, happening to the variables in our program. We've seen that variables can be integers or floats or booleans. Now, in that case, statements are uh, we or us telling it within the program, um, the computer or the compiler especially, what needs to be done with those variables. Now, there are different types of statements and each uh, um, expression, for instance, is a statement which are always ended with a semicolon, as you can see here. And as an example, an expression, uh, an assignment is an expression and is also a statement. So here the assignment, where you have the value of variable A is added to the value of variable B. And that is then, that sum is then given to variable X as a value. This is called an assignment. More about that in a second. What you can also have is a compound statement. That's also an assignment. Uh, a statement. In that case, you have um, the curly braces here before and after a list of statements, one or more statements. And of course, an empty statement can also happen. Um, so in that case, if you have a white space and or semicolons that follow after each other, those are empty statements where nothing is happening, basically. Those are different kinds of statements that you can have within a C and C++ program. Now, once you execute your program, as I already said, you have this particular main function, and this main function is defined by its compound statement that uh, follows. So once you have a main function, you uh, follow it with a particular set of statements, and these statements are then executed one after the other, from the beginning to the end. Now, expressions um, return in C and C++ always a value. So anything that is uh, uh, something that happens in your program and that returns a value after this is uh, happening, uh, this is called an expression. And one a good example here is an operator. So we have the sum example as we saw in the previous slides. Um, then this is causing uh, the program to do something and to return a value. So this is an expression. The assignment operator is also an expression because it also returns a value. Um, this is perhaps a little bit less intuitive, uh, but this is the way it happens in C and C++. So in that case, if we have x equals a plus b, in that case, the value that uh, x um, gets, the sum of a and b, in that case, is what is being returned as well. So this value that is being returned is then making this also an expression. That means that you can use an assignment inside another assignment, as you can see over here. So here you assign the variable y uh, the value of a. So then in that case, after this assignment, what is returned is the value of y. And this is immediately fed into this assignment where x uh, gets the value of, in this case, y plus b. Now this is not very intuitive and is of course therefore bad programming style, but it is a possibility and it is valid in C and C++. When you have assignments, then you also have left and right values. So basically everything on the left side of an assignment is an L value, everything on the right side is an R value. And you have to be very careful that you don't switch those two around. So the assignment is assigning whatever is on the right side to the left, and therefore it is not possible to put anything on the left that cannot change. So you need to have a variable for instance, or anything that represents a storage that can be altered. So it needs to be able to be changing because in an assignment, you take the value from the right side and assign it to whatever is on the left side. That means also that on the right side, you can have expressions, any expression that returns a value. Um, and it also goes for constants, for instance, or variables, or operators that act on variables, or even assignments, as we just saw. That means that this example here is definitely not correct. First of all, it's not a proper expression because there's no uh, a proper statement because it's not ended um, with a semicolon. Um, 
And uh, the, on the left side is something that cannot change. Also, that is uh, raw. OK. There. Uh, mathematical operators, I think, is kind of simple. So the, the sum operator, the minus operator, the multiplication and the division operator can operate on floats, like floating points, values, just as we are used to with any other type of software or just in mathematics. Now, integers are definitely not floats because there you don't have uh, digi uh, digital uh, digits after uh, the, the decimal sign. So in that case, plus and minus are exactly the same. So if you have 10 plus 10, you could get 20. Or if you get 20 minus 30, you get minus 10. Um, the multiplication is also still fairly simple. Uh, but the division is a little bit less intuitive because if you, for instance, have 20, 21 divided by 4 and those two are integers, are seen as integers, then the result will be 5. Um, the remainder is somehow left away because this is an integer division. So once you have integers or you have these contents, constants um, uh, written like this, you will have integer division and therefore you might not get what you expected. The same goes for the modulo operation, uh, or this is something that, that is added for integers. In that case, the remainder is given uh, after you divide, for instance, 21 by 4. Okay. Then there are several things that can be compressed in C and C++. One thing is where you have variables uh, that are assigned to that exact same variable plus an operator. Um, and you can have this for the sum, but also minus, multiplication, division, and modulo. So if you have a variable on the left side, and you have that variable on the right side with operators, you can shorten this like this. So this assignment can be shorted, and this is exactly the same as this over here. So in this case, we take the value of my age, we add 2, and this value that we get in that case is given to the same variable my age as a value. And this is exactly what happens here. And this would exactly be also the case with those other operators. Now we can also do this with one variable. So if you do c equals c plus 1, you could have done c plus equals 1. But for this 1, which is an increment, or minus 1, which is a decrement, you can make it even shorter and you can say C++ for the plus one case and C minus minus for the minus one case. The reason is that uh, inside an, a computer or inside a processor, these tend to be specific operations. Um, and this is something that is taken over in C and C++. And we call those operators with a side effect because they change the value of the, um, the variable that we are working on. Uh, working on. So if C was before or had the value 3 in this case, after this particular um, expression, we would have uh, C equal 4. And the same for the, uh, the decrement operators. Now, very specific uh, and also quite important is that um, this um, can, can appear as a prefix or as a postfix operator. So the prefix operator, the plus plus, is before the C, before the variable, and then the postfix is behind the variable. And this is in most cases not a problem. If you just have that as a statement, the, the effect will be exactly the same. However, if you have this particular um, expression that you move into, for instance, an assignment, like here in these two examples, the difference will be different. Because with a prefix, you first uh, do this operation, you first increment the value x in this case, the value of um, the variable x. Um, and if you do this as a prefix operator, then you first do this. And if x is 5, then basically you first increment x to 6 and then assign this to the variable to the value of variable a. Now, if you, however, had it as a postfix operator, then you do this at, at, at the end. So in that case, first, a is assigned the value of x so 5, and after that, x is incremented. So x will then afterwards be 6, and a still 5. So there is a little bit of a difference there that sometimes can lead to quite a bit of confusion. 
for instance, in for loops, um, where this is often used. More about that later. And very important is that we tend to, for instance, in assignments, have loads of operators cluttered together, for instance, for a certain formula. In that case, what goes for maths, or what we're used to in mathematics, tends to also happen here. There is a particular priority or precedence of these operators over these operators. If that's not the case, in that case for an assignment, we go from left to right. And if you don't want this particular order to appear, then you can use parentheses to make sure that particular things are executed first, um, and then after what particular expressions are executed first, after which the other operators get a go. So in this case, x equals 5 plus 3 minus 8 times 9. We know here that the precedence is uh, over these operators, so over the multiplication, so this is executed first. And then we go from left, so then we take 5 plus 3 minus the result, the result of 8 times 9, which is exactly the same as if we would have written it this way. The same for the assignments, so in that case the assignment is going is starting from the left, so in this case we first do the assignment of 0 as a value to the variable x, uh, z, then to that of y, and then to that of x. So also these two um, expressions are exactly the same. The rule of thumb that we usually have is that we use the precedence for our, um, our mathematical operators and forget all the, about all the rest and use, a, um, use the parentheses, you know, the, uh, um, the, the brackets or the braces to make sure that we know or we can see immediately what is executed first to avoid uh, problems in how to understand this. Then we have just as the mathematical operators also bit operations. Uh, bit operations is a way to get uh, within a variable, for instance, to the single bits that are represented in this variable. And to that we have logical operators, so the bitwise not, and, or, and xor. You can shift uh, the bits within um, uh, uh, a, a variable. And uh, these are kind of the operations that you might need, for instance, if you're doing programming into a microcontroller programmer uh, environment. This is also the reason why we're not going to see too much about these bit operator operations. I will, I've put it into the um, syllabus, into the slides, so you can see that this sometimes is uh, happening. But in this course, we probably won't need these operations at all. So if you don't want to, you can forget about exactly these type of things. Right. Another important expression is the relational operators, or another type of operator is uh, the relational operators which we'll, uh, we will see later in, for instance, the if statement. Now, if we want to see if a certain thing is the case or not, then often we will have, for instance, uh, the test where the two things are equal. And this is, of course, completely different from the, uh, the assignment. The assignment with one equal sign uh, makes sure that whatever is on the right side is then put as a value into the variable that is on the left side of, a, of an assignment. In this case, uh, we check whether what is on the left is exactly the same as, as that is on the right. So if you have two different values, then the result will be false. If you have two exactly the same values, the result will be true. And this can be an expression on uh, the left side, on the right side, so you can calculate something there, and whatever is then between brackets or uh, parentheses in this case is being executed first, and then that way you can see whether a certain thing is false or true. And this goes for not equals, in that case an exclamation mark followed by, the, uh, by an equal sign, greater than or greater than or equal, less than and less than or equal. More about that we will see later uh, when we start uh, with loops, for instance, or today already for the if test. Right, so next part, uh, which is also an expression, is uh, the input and output. And there we have already seen several things. Uh, because we've already written things to our terminal window or asked the user in our terminal window for certain values. Let's revisit this and let's start immediately with another program. Um, so important is when we start a program is that we include the library that is required to use C out in this case. And uh, what we have in that case is IO stream. Um, as we said, that is a library that allows us to take these things 
and use them. Otherwise, the compiler would complain that C out is something that it doesn't know about. Then, another thing we've seen is that we always have a main function somewhere in our program, and that this main function is a function with a compound statement, as we just saw, and this compound statement is basically a series of statements now that are executed one after the other. So in this case, we could have, for instance, we have an integer that we call number, for instance. Um, we could write something to, uh, we could assign this number uh, a number, say we call it 45. Um, we output this number, for instance, to uh, the command line, or we can ask first the user about uh, this. We saw that this is usually called um, standard C in, and that for C in, we basically use uh, this particular operator in this particular direction. So in this case, we can say um, we ask the user to give a value to number. This is usually nicer if we ask the user uh, with a particular output. So we can say C out, uh, please give a number. There we go. Um, then in that case, we read the value that is given to us by the user inside the variable number. And then we can, for instance, write this out again like so. Number. As we also saw, it's at the end of the main function, when you reach the end, you need to return, or it's nice to return something, because the function is here defined in this line as something that is returning an integer. Right, if we write this out, and if we compile this, as we saw, compiling is happening like this. Let's call the executable test. Let's execute this. We give it a number. If we give it 12, then we say, OK, you wrote 12. Now, what we saw here, or what we see here, is that the program is stopped or has stopped executing. We return this 0 to the operating system, but can't see this here. And we end up at exactly the same line as this you wrote here. Now, in the Past examples, I believe, we've added here um, the SCD end line, which basically means that you end the line and start at a new line. So if we do this now and um, compile again, that's always important to first compile and execute again. If we then give it a new number, we end up at the next line. That's just to give an insight about why this uh, end line, C out and C in, uh, are important right now because this allows us to print things to the terminal, to request things from the terminal, and put those in particular variables as we see here. Now what we will do in the next um, weeks or the, for the whole semester when we do this, the standard means that all these uh, C in, C out, and end line are in a namespace. And there's a shorter way of doing this. We can in the beginning say whenever we mention C out, C in, or end line, we really mean the standard ones. And this is something that you can uh, express by saying we are using C in. Um, and this you can use for all three. So we are using C out and we're using the end line from the standards namespace. That means if we um, compile this again and test this, in that case everything still works as before, but in this case our program has become a little bit smaller because if we output several times lots of things, we can just write C out instead of this standard namespace C out. Okay, so this is how we uh, have been using C out and C in and end line so far. As you can see, uh, whatever is then uh, done here can be an expression. That means we could also have something that is adding two things. So we had here um, an, a particular variable as an expression. We can just say, you didn't write. And then for instance, 
number plus one. If we save this, we compile our program and then we execute, we write three and we get indeed our number four. So number plus one is an expression. This expression is uh, returning the number four. This four is then given to C out. And as a result, we get you didn't write four as the output line on our terminal. Right, so let's now go back to our slides. So input and output allow us to interact with our program. We can write uh, particular values into our program. Those we can catch in our program with C in and write to variables. And we can write certain things from our program to the user, um, to the terminal so that the user can um, read these things. Now in this uh, next few slides, we basically have seen that um, what we just did in the program as well. So we have to uh, make sure that we know where C in and C out are coming from. So they are coming from the IO stream library where C in and out reside. We showed a way to shorten the fact that we don't have to uh, provide the namespace, the STD in this case, the standard namespace everywhere. We can just say C in and C out everywhere in our main program or in main function. And before the main function, we declared that we are using the the C in from this particular namespace. Right, then the final thing we're going to see is a very important thing in programming, it's called the if statement. Now the if statement is just a statement like all the other statements we've seen so far. It starts with a keyword called if, and it will be followed by parentheses, always with parentheses, those need to be there, which then hold an expression. And as we saw already, an expression can be multiple things nested in each other. Now, if this case is true, that's if this expression then returns the true um, uh, value, then this if, uh, then the statement that is following if, or the parenthesis, is being executed. It doesn't have to be on the next line, it can also be on exactly the same line, although this is, of course, way nicer to see. And we indent in this case as well, um, just because that is a nice, uh, because it looks nicer in that case. So we can clearly see if the new value is smaller than the minimum value, then the, min then the value that is in minimum, then minimum is assigned the new value. Uh, it reads quite simple in that case, and, um, and that allows us to do certain things on certain conditions, and only on certain conditions. Now, the else clause is taking care of whatever, whatever happens if this is not the case. And the reason why the else clause can be useful is we could do everything with just if statements. We could just say, in this case, for the example, if a is smaller than b, then we assign minimum the value of a. And if b is smaller than a, then we assign minimum the value of b. Now, something is wrong here, as you can already see with the comments. The thing that is wrong here is that there is one condition that we completely lose here. If a and b, the two variables, have exactly the same value, then minimum is not assigned at all. So minimum equals a is not uh, the case, and minimum equals b is not the case, because this two if statements did not return true for what is between the parentheses. Now, it's a much nicer and cleaner way of coding if we use the else statement. In that case, we have if a certain expression is true, then we execute statement one. And if this expression was not true, if it was false, then we execute statement two, which is followed by, or which is identified also by this else keyword. So for example, if a is smaller than b, we assign the value of a to the variable minimum, else we assign the, vari uh, the value of b to the variable of minimum. And this does not uh, have any dangerous situations where if a and equals b, in this case, if a and b are the same, then uh, still this over here will be executed, that statement. Now, what if really does, and this is because it's coming from uh, C, um, is it will check if it returns a zero, whatever is between the parentheses. If it returns a zero, then this is meaning false. So in that case, whatever is uh, it's tested for is returning false, and uh, whatever is followed by the parentheses is not executed. 
However, if you have something else but, but zero, like a one, but also two, three, and so on, then those are uh, seen as true. Um, normally, you would like it to be false and true, of course, or zero and one, but this is kind of coming from the C language. Right. Now, if we nest if statements, and this is a possibility, we have to be really careful on how we indent our, indent our program. And this is also the reason why uh, the curly braces or the compound statements within um, an if statement are usually favored. So in this case, we have our main function, just like we've seen before, which returns zero at the end. Uh, we define two booleans, A and B. And then we test first if A is true, if that is the case. We've seen that we now execute uh, what, what follows. And what follows is this particular statement over here. Now the question is if this is the statement that follows or if this is the statement that follows. Now in fact, what happens is that these two are coming after each other. So in that case, contra-intuitively, you would say that if B is uh, false in this case, which it is, then this particular thing is executed, which is not what you wanted. You wanted if A is true and B is true, then you output A and B. However, if A is true and B is not true, um, then you output not A. Uh, that is what really happens, which is not what you wanted, of course. So to remedy situ the situation, you use the compounds um, or the curly braces to make sure that you clearly state if whatever here is true, then you execute whatever follows as a compound statement, which is from here all the way till here. If this is not the case, then you uh, execute this over here. Now, if A is true, then you can also, of course, put a nested if statement there with no else statement whatsoever, because that's how the output was uh, formulated here. Now, what you put as an expression in this parenthesis is very important and can be combined with an AND operator, an OR operator, or a NOT operator. Now, if an AND operator is basically saying whatever is happening here needs to be true and whatever is here needs to be true. If one of those two is false or zero, as we've seen, then uh, whatever is coming after the parenthesis is not the statement or compound statement is not uh, being followed. So this and this needs to be true. For the OR statement, one or the other needs to be true. So if this is true and this is false, or this is true and this is true, or this is false and this is true, whatever follows here is executed. And then finally, the NOT statement kind of inverts it. So if x is not 5, then this is being inverted by the NOT operator, uh, and what was actually a false here becomes a true here, and whatever follows here is executed. And therefore, it's the same as if you'd say if x equals, uh, is not equal to 5. Now, these three um, operators should perhaps already be uh, known to you through logic, for instance, but if not, I think uh, by just using them and testing them out inside your terminal, you will uh, get quickly the hang out of how to use these. Right, to summarize then, what we've seen is that there are different types of statements, um, that the statements are actually defining in our program what happens to our variables, the pieces in memory that we can use, and that there are different types of statements. Um, we've seen that there are different expressions, different operators, uh, that there's this assignment operator that also returns a value, which is also very important to keep into mind. And we've seen the if statements where we just have as a rule of thumb, if you have nested if statements, or even if not, it's always a good idea to use the, cur the curly braces so that if you indent in the wrong way, things are still kind of understandable or uh, things are the way you intend it to be. Right, so this is what we've seen so far in chapter three. Um, soon we'll start with chapter four. See you next time.